Hey, everybody. I got a reveal for you guys. First of all, he's Commander Cockings. And he's having Foley. Surprise! Well, it's not the surprise. Oh. The reveal here is... This is Trek Yards. Welcome back, everybody. See, you didn't know. You thought you were on a different channel. I, you I never saw it coming. No. No, you didn't. It's a surprise. Hey, hey, hey surprise. You right. ignored the logos in the L cars. Yep. Yep. Good job. <laughs> Hi, Stuart. Hi, um, how's it going? It's pretty pretty good. Picard Season 3, Episode 1. Now, mysteries are going to be answered, right? This is a, a, a reaction to the first episode, of course. But we got a big, giant reveal in the last, like, two minutes. Um... What was it, and how do you feel? Somebody that has a British accent that uh, is actually, <laughs> exactly, yeah, uh, is actually uh, Beverly Crusher's son. So, well, at least he's, he claims to be her son. He might think he might think he's her son. And the, the way the room kind of freezes, Riker and Picard look at each other as if, it's yours, it's mine. Like, that. that's instantly the subtext of that scene, because, of course, this man is an entirely grown adult, and Beverly disappeared 20 years ago. And very, very specific to keep reiterating the 20 years part. The actor is 33, I believe. So he's not looking at his mid-20s. Uh, although you could obviously argue that, you know, 20 years of rugged space adventure with your mum might make you look older, potentially. But then also you could argue one of the most advanced, um, you know, medical professionals in the galaxy could probably keep you from looking 10 years older than you are. But of course, is the question is the answer is is a deduction. Did Beverly and Picard try right after Nemesis? Potentially, when Data died, they were sad. They you know, and then they they tried for a bit. Didn't go well. She got pregnant. She went away. Boom, boom, boom. Twenty years, a legacy. Because season two, a lot of that was I am the last of the Picards. I have no legacy. It was very sad. Not that he's a Picard, but he could be a Picard. What do you th what do you think? I mean, is it is it, well, is it, logical, is it Patrick's? That's a logical conclusion people are going to come to because Laris did say you guys tried to have a relationship. And he's like, the word there was tried," which means yeah, you probably bumped uglies. But I don't think that's the context here. Uh, there's a lot of other context clues, especially in like the the closing credit scenes. A lot of genetic stuff, a lot of DNA type sequencing stuff, um, and we do get a pan across of Lieutenant Commander Jack Crusher's case. Um, the on, another ongoing theory with this is that it's not the son. In fact, a clone of Jack Crusher for whatever reason, um, which could be age accelerated. Something else that was brought up in my live last night was the fact that this maybe this because the age is about right. If when B Beverly disappeared for season two of TNG, oh, that, that line something up? something happened there where she had a kid off screen didn't tell anybody for whatever reason maybe she had her mind, memory wiped or whatever found out about it later because that would put him at about the right age mm. <clears throat> now that's that's interesting because that is an entirely fresh year yeah so and you could probably retcon it gently that maybe they accidentally got drunk one night in season two did some stuff she and she had to go away didn't know she was pregnant gave birth you could be that uh, because also remember in season one, there, there, there was moments. That was obviously a subplot they were going to go into. So I, I could more see them being close and doing something reckless season one, season two, than season seven, say, after the friendship had developed over, you know, almost yeah, a but decade. There's no, there's no reason that she wouldn't have told them that she was pregnant. Um, well, no, there isn't. Even, no, there isn't even, not no reason. There could be lots of reasons to know yet. That's the point. Yeah, that's true. And even if it was during season two where she was supposedly head of Starfleet Medical, um... That could have all been a ruse for whatever reason. Somebody like replaced her with a fake her. I don't know. That's happened before in Dread. Um, and then like erased her memory, got this kid out of it for some reason. I don't know. There's lots of theories. I, I hope, honestly, I just hope it's Picard's kid just straight up. So there's, a, there's another Picard to continue the line. I mean, he's also English accent. Well, and while entirely different accent to Patrick, who obviously to me doesn't sound English at all. I mean, he has lived in America most of his life at this point. This kid far more English, but if you're gonna have a Picard, it makes sense to do an English. You know, that kind of is a nice touch to keep, like, you know, a French English, of course. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, no, I, that that's very interesting. I mean, Clone Jack Crusher is a, is a giant leap, but of course, there needs to be a giant thematic reason for that, which there could be, but that's that's a reason to an end. Certainly, the question is then why you know the the, the because Crusher left. 
is that tied to this character? Is it tied to either coming back into her life, you know, after a gap, maybe they were then 14, came in, whatever, then you got the 20 years, or wanting to start something else with a new kid, or is the situation based on the, you know, helping the innocent that they keep saying in all the promotional materials, they do say in this episode, they're running, they've been running from these guys for a long time, I think the impetus is years, you know, at least a year or something like that. So, it, you know, is the chicken or the egg? Is the kid the reason for the attacks or is the kid just there to help with the attacks? Because if the kid is the reason for the attacks, you can create all these giant, giant um, science mystery things. Or is that not that? Or is it more just coincidence and convenience? Uh, I think he's probably the reason that they're being attacked, first of all. But and it also answers another question. If he is genetically altered or if he's genetically made to be a clone of Jack for whatever reason, it would make sense that she would say no Starfleet because that's highly illegal. <laughs> um, and it could be one of the reasons that she disappeared for 20 years, but it could answer the question of why she specifically said no Starfleet. And then there's the, the keyword that she used, Hellbird. I don't know. I think there's something genetic going on as opposed to like biological, honestly. Well, if you want to say, for example, maybe because at the end of if you remember, at the end of all good things, Crusher does know because of aromatic syndrome, perhaps she did give birth to a child with Picard, and then realized he had a really bad aromatic syndrome. Like it was going to be really really debilitating, so she genetically modified him, knowing that she had to leave Starfleet space to do it. So he's an augment, a la we've seen that in recent shows, Stranger Worlds, and also Prodigy. And then obviously once she's, you know, that would explain the enhanced uh, aging, augment DNA, you know, maybe, maybe like they'll say, oh, we had to grow him past some point is, you know, we had to skip his puberty to skip the aromatic syndrome's development, you know, something clever like that. And then, then yeah, he's legal and she's spent all this time trying to save him. She doesn't want to take him back and, 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 you know, whatever. Because, because the Eos yeah, is a very, very small ship. It's like a home. It's like a you know, uh, augmented runabout in a sense. It's only a few rooms. I mean, there's the shuttle is basically like one sixth of the width. It's very, very, which is great. It, it is like just a personal ship. Her and her son, there isn't yeah. a crew, there isn't a whatever. And she's truly, she's clearly trying to save him because she locks him in a room when they, when they, they're about to board. Well, save or hide. Because also one thing that we forgot to mention here is that when they scan the ship, they say one definite biosign, definitely Beverly Crusher, in a tube, which involves you think heavier scanning, yet they didn't detect him properly, which would lead to the augment theory. Maybe you know, maybe they are after him and he's evading scans because then if she locks him in a room, well, there's only so many rooms on the ship. The, the enemies could have come in and killed him, but if he doesn't read on sensors, they might not know where he is and leave the ship or destroy the ship, which I guess is better, much better. But she didn't have a plan, so whatever. So maybe he is modified to to remove him from sensors. That'll play into the plot later, I'd guess. Well, and not just, but not just that, Lister. Is it lying? Is the whole thing a lie? Because many a time we've heard, "Who's my son?" What do you mean by that? Well, I adopted him, or you know, or, or I found him twelve years ago when he was a teenager, and she made me her son. Like that is a great sting in an episode, and obviously it grabs Picard and whatever. But it could just be adopted, or or she was rescuing a family that the mum died. I'll take your son. Don't worry, because they don't call him Crusher. I believe in the behind the scenes material. Now, so that could be a lie like Khan, fine. But, like, that could just be a adopted mother thing. I find that less likely, but it could be, it could definitely be the case, yeah. But I, I think he only knows what she's told him. So if he is a clone of Jack, he, she would, when he was younger, she would just say, you're my son, whatever, or whatever. For whatever reason, I don't know why she would want to say that. But um, So that's why when I started this video out, I said he thinks he's her son. Because we only got his perspective as a, this thus far, so, or he's deliberately lying as well. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know. Just there's 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 a lot of hints and stuff that lead to genetics and kind of DNA well, it, and stuff. Well it, well, it feels more like a season one premise again, where there's like four potential setups versus season two, where there's one straight line of eh, who cares? Which is nice. Talk about stuff again. It's nice. But I, I like kind of like that if she, you know, rescued somebody years ago, 15 years ago, adopted this person, because then you've got the uns instability of now, why is this random lady coming after them? Because his family, his colony, maybe even she, maybe, maybe she, maybe there was a colony of augments, maybe you're going to link to Stranger Worlds, where there's some Illyrians out there, 
and they were killed. Maybe this um, Vadik hates genetically modified people for whatever reason. Goes in massacres a colony. One boy survives. Beverly adopts him. Um, helps him stay off the radar by changing his genetics even further. You know, in little ways like immune sensors, um, heightened aging to get him to fighting age, whatever. And then, well, treats her like his mum because basically, you know, she kind of made him in a sense. She made who he is finally. I mean, I think that certainly adds a lot of nuance. And it links directly with the baddie. Because we they've I believe they've said that the baddie's not specifically out to kill Picard. And and clearly that you know, there's tech that's nothing to do with Picard, that they, he was not meant to be on that ship, it's not about Picard, they're not chasing Picard. So he's more happens to be there versus I must kill Picard, but I do I am looking for Crusher and or Sun. Big reveal, but I think there's still bigger reveals to come. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. If there wasn't, it'd be very disappointing in episode one, Steve. If that was the biggest reveal of the entire season, it's like, oh, okay. Comment down below what you guys think about this guy, what the situation is. We want to hear your thoughts as well. We do love our community. You guys are awesome. So please hit that like button and join us. Subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell icon so you get notified when we go live and do other breakdown videos like this. We really appreciate all of you guys. I want to hear your thoughts. So participate any way you can. And one of said ways is during our live stream, you can, the audience, put in your thoughts via Super Chat. Uh, we read them all out. I mean, interact with every single one personally or in the regular chat as well. We read those as well. But Super Chats help the channel to keep going and grow if possible. Uh, other ways to help in that direct way because all of our content is free. And therefore, we need some help to make sure it stays free. So, support us on Patreon if you can. It's monthly. Or join the channel on YouTube. Also monthly. Or you can buy merch. The link's down below. Don't That's right. So, until next time, he's Commander Kirkings. It's Captain Foley. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.